welcome to our Sunday morning service. I trust that you all are well and blessed. My reading this morning is from the Chronicles by Dr. Roshan Singh. Tough times will not last. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. There are times when life is just difficult and hard. All of us experienced such times and perhaps will still face these times in the future. When such times visit us, we need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The question now arises, how do we receive this comfort? Well, we receive this comfort by living in the fear of the Lord. This means that you honor and respect God and when he shows you something, you do it immediately. There are times when you become angry and want to strike back, but begin to pray in tongues and praise God. This will drive your direction and perspective. It will cause your spirit to rise up and strengthen you during tough times. Remember, tough times will not last, but tough people do. During tough times, depend on the Lord's strength and spirit to help you and comfort you. Begin to lean on the Lord's love and encouragement. No matter the tough situation you may be facing, trust and depend on the Holy Spirit's help. God's supernatural Holy Spirit's help is available to you. Declaration of Faith the Holy Spirit is my comforter, my counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, and he lives in me, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please get your Bible, notebook, and pen, and get ready to receive the word of God from our man of God, Pastor Ricardo. I trust that you are blessed. Amen. Well, praise God. Good morning and welcome to our broadcast this morning. We are so glad to have you join us and uh, we trust and we believe that you'll be blessed and you'll be encouraged by the Word of God this morning. So wherever you are, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Now, before we go into the Word of God, it would only be right if we open this morning in a word of prayer. Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for your precious Word. Thank you, my God, that this morning we have an opportunity, Father God, to share your word. I pray, Father, for every person that is under the influence of this telecast, who's under the influence of this broadcast by whatever means, Father God, visual or audio. I pray in the name of Jesus that the word of God, Father, will find an entrance into their hearts in Jesus' name. Almighty God, I pray that you'll anoint my vocal cords to declare your word, Father God. And I thank you now in the name of Jesus that your word will accomplish the purpose that it has been sent for to accomplish. By reason of your word, Father, where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. So we thank you now this morning for the power that is made available unto us by your precious word. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, we give you thanks and praise. We give you all the glory and the honor. And God's precious people said, Amen, Amen. And amen. Praise God. Well, welcome once again. Thank you for joining us this morning. Now, this morning I want to share with you a scripture which is very dear to my heart, found in the book of Philippians, chapter number four. Many of you may be familiar with the scripture, and it's verse number 13. We find the apostle Paul says there, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The message translation of that particular verse says, Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Praise God. Paul was speaking about just before that, about the various things that he found in his life. And he found that in whatever state he was, he could make it purely because of one reason and one reason alone was because of Christ in him. Amen. Christ in him who strengthens him. I can make it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul was not saying I can do some things or I might be able to do whatever I'm called to do. He said, no, you, that, that, that is a very confident statement that he says. And that, I love the tense of it. It is present continuous. It means wherever I am, Whatever I have, I can make it by reason of Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And the word strengthens, if you look at the uh, 
It's a Greek translation. It's a Greek word, endunamo, which means to empower. It means to make strong. It means to enable. So Paul was saying, I can do it through Christ who empowers me, through Christ who makes me strong, through Christ who empowers me and enables me. Hallelujah. And endunamo finds its um, origin, the root origin of that word, is the word dunamis. Dunamis power. That is what Jesus shared with his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where he says, You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and in all the earth. Hallelujah. That word power, dunamis. It means dunamis power. And that is the power that's available to you and I. And the translation of that word, the meaning of that word, Dunamis means it is the strength or power which resides in a thing or person by virtue of their nature, which they put forth, which they show forth or exert to perform miracles and demonstrate supernatural power. And that is the power that is available to you and I as believers in Christ Jesus, as children of God. We have the anointing of God upon our lives to do the supernatural. Hallelujah to the glory of God. And I said it also resides in things. If we look at, for instance, example, um, the rod of Moses. The rod of Moses was anointed. And when he stood before, before Pharaoh, the magicians of Egypt of, of, of Moses' day, they also performed the very same thing miracle where their staffs also their rods also became serpents but what happened was the rod of moses which became a serpent it swallowed all of the serpents of the magicians of egypt so there's an anointing from god which is far above the the things of this world and what people in this world would use to try and show forth his power. The power of God is always greater, friend. And that's my message to you this morning, is that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We look again at the anointing, in the account of the woman uh, in Zarephath. She had just a little bit of flour and oil, and it was an anointed word from the man of God, which caused the flour and the oil to not run out never ran dry for three years she had a three-year supply because of the anointing hallelujah and in the book of Acts, chapter number 19 we find that there were hankies and there were uh, aprons that were taken from the apostle paul laid upon the sick and they recovered hallelujah so that is the anointing that we have that is what we have available unto us as children of god and as people of god Hallelujah, by virtue of our nature. Now to anoint in the Bible, uh, to anoint means, it means to, to rub on, it means to smear, it means also to, 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 um, to apply to. So the anoint, to be anointed also means to be consecrated. In other words, to be set apart, to be set apart for a particular purpose. So God anoints, we find in the church, He anoints men and women of God um, into the office of the fivefold ministry gifts. We have the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. And what is the purpose of that? It's for the equipping of the saints. Hallelujah. So that you can be equipped. So that the, that anointing can flow into your lives. And that you too will be able to fulfill the work that Christ has called us to do as children of God. I love the, uh, the gospel of Mark's gospel, chapter number 1 and verse number 1. The Bible says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And friends, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the ministry of the gospel, it has begun and it, there is no end to it. It hasn't ended. It doesn't say in scripture the end of the gospel. And we have been called now as ambassadors of Christ, as children of God, to go through, throughout the world and fulfill 
our calling in sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why God has anointed you and I so that we can declare to the world the goodness of God and share the message of the gospel with everybody we meet. Hallelujah. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means my strength is not of my own. It is of Christ Jesus. And I love the message translation um, which says, Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything, through the one who makes me who I am. I am who I am by virtue of the one who is, who resides within me. And his name is Jesus. And that word Christ where Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And it's the anointed one and his anointing which resides within me. And by virtue of that, I can make it through anything. Friends, the anointing takes no thought of your surroundings. The anointing takes no thought of your surroundings. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you have, whether you have not. It doesn't matter whether you're big, whether you're small. It doesn't matter. Your size is insignificant. Your, your, your status is insignificant. But the anointing of God causes you to break through any circumstance. The anointing of God causes you to break through every limitation. I want to share with you something in the book of Isaiah. Praise God. Isaiah chapter number 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear sweet Jesus. Isaiah chapter number 10, and I want to read verse 27 with you. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. It is the anointing which breaks the yoke. It is the anointing which lifts the burden. Hallelujah. Burdens are lifted because of the anointing. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you. Hallelujah. I love the God, the, um, the book of Isaiah chapter number 61. Let us look at something. This is awesome. I mean, we just, I just shared with you Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus says you'll receive dunamis, dunamis power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Power to witness. And Isaiah chapter number 61 the Bible says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Friend, the spirit of the Lord God is upon you and he has anointed you to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. You are the planting of the Lord. Friend, wherever you are, I want you to know that God has planted you. God has planted you for such a time as this. God has planted you for the now. You are in a now moment. You are in a now season. Hallelujah. The important things that I would like to share with you this morning, my friend, is that do not, do not um, do not compare yourself to everybody in the world. Do not compare yourself to your neighbor. Do not compare yourself to anybody else. I'm speaking to a doctor this morning. I'm speaking to a lawyer this morning. I'm speaking to a nurse this morning. I'm speaking to a teacher. I'm speaking to a student. Whatever your status, whoever you are, wherever you are, don't look at someone else and say, yeah, well, if they're going through it, I'm going to go through it. 
you know, we are basically the same. No, the difference is that you are anointed. If you are a doctor, you are an anointed doctor. If you are a teacher, you are an anointed teacher. That means that you have an enablement, an empowerment from God to make it through anything. That's what makes you different. You are not just any ordinary professional person. You are not just any ordinary business person. You are an anointed businessman, an anointed businesswoman. Praise God. You are anointed to do the works of God. You have been anointed to proclaim the ministry of Jesus Christ. The ministry of Christ has not ended. It begun and it is still moving progressively, hallelujah, that it's moving through you and I, wherever you are, the gospel is being preached, your life, your life is preaching the gospel, when people look at you and they wonder, but how come, you know, you're able to handle things the way you handle things, how come you're able to, you know, you are still able to flourish in spite of circumstances and in spite of what's happening around you, it is because of the anointing, the anointing causes you to break through, causes you to break out. It was the anointing that caused the fish and the loaves to multiply. There's an anointing for increase. Hallelujah. There's an anointing for wisdom. God, Kama Aro Sharabahanda. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, he is the anointed one. And he has an anointing that he places upon you to perform the supernatural in your daily walk. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to share something with you in the book of Romans chapter number 8 and the first verse. The Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. You do not go according to what you see. You do not go according to what you feel. You do not go according to what you hear, but you go by the spirit of God. You are led of the spirit of God. You are walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There is a law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus that has set you free, that has made you free. You are the free of the Lord this morning. Praise God. In John's gospel, chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus says, flesh, the, the flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. What Jesus was saying is that, friend, the words I speak to you, they are anointed. They are anointed. The words of Jesus are anointed with power to bring to pass exactly what he's, what he's sent it to do. Praise God. In John 15, John chapter 15, I want to share this with you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm just so excited about what the Lord is doing. In John 15, verse number 5, watch what Jesus says here. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He is the vine. You are the branches. Where is Christ? He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And you are the branches. You are his branch. That means you abide. Unless you cannot operate in the anointing, unless you abide in Christ. I'll say that again. You cannot operate in the anointing unless you abide in Christ. You need to abide in Him. Remain in Him. Dwell in Him. He is the vine. You are the branches. Hallelujah. So you draw your strength from Him. Hallelujah. You draw all that you need from Him. Your sufficiency is not of your own. It is of Jesus. It is of Christ. Praise God. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides, watch, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. You see that? The anointing causes you to bear much fruit. Not just fruit, but much fruit. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Very important. I want you to highlight this. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. And that is why Paul said, 
I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything because of the one who is in me, the one who resides within me, and the one in whom I reside, the one in whom I abide. In verse number 7 of the same chapter, Jesus says, If you abide in me, and my words, we just read, I just shared with you John 6, 63, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, the words that I speak to you, they are anointed with power. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. In other words, it will be so be it. You will speak the word of God with power. Hallelujah. There's, a, there's, there's power within the word and you'll speak it, but you've got to abide in Jesus. And you've got to allow his words to abide in you. And how do I do that? By sitting under anointed preaching of the word of God. By listening to or watching anointed sermons. Hallelujah. By anointed men and women of God. By reading anointed literature. Hallelujah. That is how you can grow in the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got to spend time in the word of God. You got to study the word of God. Make time to study the word of God. Make time to reflect upon the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. So that the anointing of the word will find a dwelling place in you. And as that anointing finds a dwelling place in you, you'll find you'll be led by the anointing. Let me share something with you in 1 John, the book of 1 John. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear sweet Jesus. The book of 1 John. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Jesus. 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 20. But you have an anointing. From the Holy One. Who's the Holy One? Jesus. John is referring to Jesus. You have an anointing from Jesus. And you know all things. The anointing of Jesus Christ that resides within you will lead you in all truth. Hallelujah. This is what John was writing to the people of his day because in John's day there were many types of a doctrine that was going out. And, and this is what John was saying, that that anointing, that anointing will teach you. That anointing will lead you and guide you in all truth. That we read in the same uh, 1 John uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 27. He says, but the anointing which you have received from him, from Jesus, abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit imparts to you the truth of God's word, so that you start listening to the right messages. Hallelujah. You start listening to the right doctrine, the right teaching of the scriptures. But you've got to spend time in the word of God to grow in the anointing. We just read just now that there's no condemnation for any man who is in Christ, for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, you have your purpose and you have your life. I just, I'm going to share just the last scripture before I close. You might be familiar with this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 17. If anyone, if any man, therefore, if anyone, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Not some things, all things have become new. How? By being in Christ. It is in Christ that you find your true identity. It is in Christ 
that you find your true purpose. It is in Christ that you get your name back. What's your name? A child of the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible in the book of Ephesians tells us that we are named after him. We are named after him. Hallelujah. The whole family of God is named after him. So you get your name back in Christ Jesus. You get your value back in Christ Jesus. The devil, don't let the devil lie to you. The devil is not a factor. And don't give the devil any power that he doesn't have. Whatever power he claims to have, he steals. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ Jesus has come to give you life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. You have abundant life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it is in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, friends, you are a new creation, a new creature. So don't base your life on your past because in the books of God, in the record of heaven, once you receive Jesus, your past ceases to exist. There's no record of your past. There's only a glorious future which lies ahead of you. So you've got to spend time in the word of God and you've got to, you've got to grow and get, get, your, get your spirit man built up and pursue the anointing of God in Christ Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing. He'll give you strength, hallelujah, and he'll give you the power you need to overcome anything in your life. Praise God. I trust this morning that you've been blessed by the word of God. And I believe that God has a specific purpose with your life. And God has a plan with your life. And if you are on the brink of giving up, I just want to let you know this morning, don't give up. Don't give Satan the joy. And you just rise up to your feet this morning. I'm speaking to you. You are an anointed child of the Most High God. You are precious in the sight of God. He loves you very, very much. And he showed you that. He demonstrated it to you at Calvary's cross. So praise God for the anointing of God. Praise God for the word of God. Praise God for all that is made available unto you and I in Christ Jesus, his son. So praise God. And before I go, I would just like to give you the opportunity. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity this morning to receive Jesus. Make him Lord and Savior of your life. And I, I, I know, I know and I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that yes, as you receive the Lord Jesus, your life will be changed. Your life will never be the same. It will be, this will be an operation by the power of the Holy Spirit who will make you a new being, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you just repeat the simple prayer of faith with me and receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Just say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you and I invite you into my heart and I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you now for washing away all my sin with your precious blood. I receive right now your precious gift of eternal life. And I declare from this moment on, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, praise God. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you. And I want to encourage you, Please connect with a local church in your local area. Find a church where you can grow. and You can have fellowship with fellow believers in Christ Jesus. And you can grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you just stretch your hands towards the table as I release the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hand. The Lord God prosper you. The Lord God grant you great success. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and your loved ones, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' blessed name, surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life as you continually dwell in the house of the Most High God forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, praise God. This is Pastor Ricardo from FCI Raymond Newcastle saying, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, God bless. Keep walking by faith. Goodbye.